All right, everybody, welcome back. We got another amazing show here on Real Estate Uncensored. Matt's got the day off. He is globe trotting the world on his thousand foot yacht. Uh, he did not give me or Gene an invite. I don't know why, but oh, I, I know I'll... why. Why? God damn it. Tell me why. Because he's selfish and he doesn't like either of us. Ugh, what a prick. Uh, thank God he's one of my That's best a good reason fans. not to invite somebody on your yacht, though. Right? I agree. Like, it's like, <laughs> nobody's getting on my yacht that I don't like. I mean, that's Listen, just, I wouldn't invite you either. I got news for you. <laughs> it's one of yachting. <laughs> <laughs> no douchebags on yachts. Wait a minute. All, all douchebags own yachts. My bad. Anyways, guys, hey, we got a great show to you, for you today. We got Mr. Robert Ring, the legend, the myth, the man, the lender of the lenders. He trains the, the gods of real estate and loans up in the Fed. He's just back on his private jet from, uh, from training the Fed on how to run this country because God knows they're fucking it up. Um, but before we get to Robert, I got to get to my Super Bowl co-host, Mr. Evil bald ninja volpe oh, man up, i'm happy to be back in the co-pilot seat even though that's not my normal space right um you and i have done some a couple off the cuff videos this week i've had a little bit of fun with you we actually have we've actually had a lot of fun it was a, a very enjoyable we were throwing around some stuff we're doing hashtag uh challenge to lead you've been a champion at that and i've been trying to follow in your footsteps you leave a very very big footprint for me to follow in um and uh, you know that the guy who's lead, doing some really cool shit is our guest today. Um, you know, Robert's been a lender for a number of years. He's a local guy here in the Bay Area with me. Uh, we're guys. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. So I want you to stay stay tuned to the end. But a couple of things we're going to cover. We're going to cover uh, cover forbearance. You know, different loan changes. What's going on in the marketplace? Um, what what Robert is doing uh, to help other real estate agents? We're going to talk about this fun little thing called hops and houses. Oh yes, hops and houses. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Then we're also going to talk about Zoom happy hours. So. So, you know, Robert, welcome back to the show. You're a victim three times over, I do believe, or if not more. So how Thanks. are you, bud? I'm doing well. How are you? Thank you. Doing well. It sounds like you have, uh, you and I were talking about it. Uh, you are uh, going on, what, three minutes of sleep right now? <laughs> yeah, for some reason, I couldn't fall asleep until like three or four in the morning. I, I think I had like low blood pressure, which is really odd. I took my blood pressure. It was like really low. You cannot hear your heart beating, you know. So I That's got up good. and I ate some... Uh, some pork jerky that's salty and that uh i got it back up right quick and then about an hour <laughs> later i fell asleep isn't that odd but, i mean it is what it is but I, yeah i'm not i'm not running a lot of sleep right now that does it for me pork jerky always gets me to go to sleep i mean it's, it's like my, it's my go-to <laughs> hey it's an uh, odd solution but it's like you know i was like hey low blood pressure sodium what has sodium pork and i had some pork jerky so <laughs> <laughs> well, let's 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 get to some of the stuff we're going to cover today. First off, Gene, I want to, I want to hit you up real quickly. What tech tip do you have for us today for all of our uh, viewers and everyone who's hanging out with us today? Um, man, you caught me off guard with that one. We haven't done a tech tip in some time. I know. I want to keep you on your toes. I like it. No, all right. So, <laughs> so uh, this has been the easy one for me. It's eh, less of a tech tip, more of a strategy tip and that's called the pattern interrupt that's what we're doing with that challenge the lead we if you go back and watch the video from yesterday where greg and i were together for a couple minutes about right, what time is that like four or five o'clock eastern time it was like two or three your time yeah it's like two ish two o'clock give or take give or take yeah, yeah. um actually I'll, i want to relay a story to you real quick but uh before i do that jump on your live video and give me two minutes of something positive in your life that's going on, keep it real, uh, put it, drop it in your feed, and I would be willing to bet you that you will get some live views and you will get some amazing comments, engagement, and interaction. And I think, I don't think I know, if you stay consistent with that over a regular daily basis, you'll watch that engagement grow. Are you seeing any res results and responses from that, Gregory? I'm not yet, but I have not been that consistent. And, you know, I will definitely try to be more consistent at it um, in the future. Robert, are you, will you accept the challenge? Will you accept the challenge to lead? Yes, of course. Great. All right. Now we got another man to do videos every day, inspiring people as we go. But let's inspire <laughs> people with some knowledge. Oh, I, didn't so, know, I didn't understand the question. So the question in, in, in will accepting the challenge to lead was to do live videos every day. Yeah, Gene, explain to him real quick what, what Challenge the Lead is. So I, I was challenged by a friend of mine 31 days ago to okay. uh, offer some positive adv advice slash thoughts slash 
whatever the stuff that's gone on during this coronavirus time. I may probably, I'm probably going to extend it. Even though I took day 31 off, I finished day 30 the other night with my wife. We wrapped it up with a, an interview, but basically we're just doing a, a video. Something's going on, something positive, something. I talked about restaurants that were changing their delivery methods outside of the box, business thinking, just little things that are going on on a regular basis. And the consistency with which I'm interrupting people's negative pattern habits on social media is getting a lot yeah. of attention. Okay. I can do that. That's a big challenge, but I'll, I'll do it. All right. Good. I love this. All right. Let's break into this thing. First thing I want to talk about right now, Robert, is something that I think a lot of people are kind of mucking around in their brain a little bit, and that is forbearance. What the fuck is forbearance? Is it a good? Is it bad? Should we suggest it? Should we not? You know, talk to me, Goose. What is going on? Yeah, totally. Well, I think first off that we shouldn't, um, we should never suggest or not suggest if people need it. You know, when it comes down to something like forbearance, and he's gone. Ladies and gentlemen, he's been blacklisted. He's no longer on this planet. Robert Ring of the Ring team is no longer here. Uh -huh. But he will be back. So, Gene, let, as, as we're waiting for Robert to come on back, let's talk about forbearance a little bit in regards to kind of, are you hearing a lot of muttering and sputtering about that? Are you kind of, I, anything kind of floating around with you? I am, actually. So it's kind of interesting that um, it's not really forbearance related, but basically uh, I have a client that's also, we produce a podcast for him called uh, Fuel. Mm -hmm. And um, he's a he's a mortgage guy. He's one of the mortgage guys around here. And we've been talking a lot about, you know, paying your bills, not paying your bills, what the effects are on you, how you're supposed to go about it. Like the big thing is, Robert, welcome back. Can you hear us? Yeah. Cool. The big thing is that, which I think Robert's going to say, is that forbearance doesn't mean you just stop paying your mortgage and then I'll let you you say what it is. Why don't you why don't you jump back into we kind of took a left turn there just to have my thoughts on it. But let's talk to the expert. What are your thoughts on it? Well, what people have a hard time understanding is that a mortgage is a live, um, it's a live product. It's a treasury. It's, a, it's tied to a bond. So basically when you pay your mortgage, you're paying into something that's helping an investor get a, a yield on a bond. Basically it's delivering a profit on a, on a, on a regular basis. So, and that it's happening and it's calculated, the interest on that is calculated daily. So even if you took like, you know, let's say that you paid your mortgage daily, which you don't, and you just took a week off of paying your mortgage. There's seven days of interest that did not get collected that need to be collected in order to produce the yield that that. that so big picture here, it can cause massive problems for the economy. Uh, it can cause some problems for you. But small picture is if you need it, you should get it right. It's there because the government put it forward, because if you need it, you should you should be able to get it right. You don't want people that can't pay their mortgage, can't get forbearance and then go into uh, notice of default or foreclosure. So this is like a, an exit lane for you if you need that. If you don't need it, don't go for it. The problem is right now, it's really easy for people to prove that they, that they need it, maybe when they don't actually need it. I've had people call me that have jobs still that go, hey, I need it. It's like, I, don't do it unless you really, really need it, right? Because what will happen is you'll get late reported on your mortgage. They'll they'll be categorized as um, national emergency declaration lates, uh, national, delinquency, national emergency delinquencies is what it's called, something like that. And the code is like 032. So it won't like take your credit score, but it'll show missed payment, missed payment, missed payment. And that's problematic when you go to do financing of any kind, if you have, if you have mortgage housing expense related uh, delinquencies. So, you know, it can be explained away. We don't know the total effect it'll have, but like if you tried to do a refinance a few months after you did six months of forbearance, uh, you it would not go through. That would be a big problem. So I'm telling you, well, yeah, don't do it, but if you do it, but if you do it, you really have to be uh, savvy about the uh, post forbearance uh, options to bring the loan current, because like I said, it's a live instrument, right? That the mortgage. So if you miss six months of payments, they have to be caught back up on because the servicer didn't miss six months of um, payments to that uh, investor, because if they did, then that bond that's, you know, a security behind your mortgage, and this sounds really complicated, wouldn't give off the yield. So that would be a bigger problem. So if we back this up a few steps, there's a guy named Mark Calabria who is um, not doing so well right now. He really needs to change his position on this, but he's the director of FHFA, and he's saying that um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are not going to help servicers through this time. So basically, if service, if servicers don't have enough liquidity, which they won't because there's a liquidity crisis in the market right now, to um, pay the investors behind these mortgages, then the bonds behind them will not produce the yields. And if the bonds don't produce the yields, bonds will become an incredibly risky investment um, on the secondary market. And if that happens, rates will go through the roof. So there's an overall question of 
stability in the mortgage real estate market right now surrounding rates. The Fed stepped in and did their part with a huge bond buying program to keep rates down and keep them stable. Um, now Mark Calabria needs to step in and use Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to help servicers um, basically weather the storm through the forbearance period. And if they don't, it could have real problems. Now, the reason he's taking this stand is because uh, he, he's like a Southern Republican uh, Trump appointee, small government, anti-bailout dude. And he does not want Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to be controlled or any uh, connection to the government any longer. He wants them moved away. So he's been he's been working on it for the last, you know, however many years he's been in office. I don't know. Uh, stacking up their reserves. So like Fannie Mae has over 14 billion in reserves and Freddie Mac has over 9 billion in reserves. And so he's thinking, oh, we're going to take this beautiful nest egg of, you know, over 20 billion that we've saved up to try and disconnect from the government. And we're going to use that to bail out servicers. And that might result in us needing to go back to the government saying, hey, we need another handout. And he doesn't want a handout. So he's kind of digging his heels in. And Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman, is giving him a little bit of cover right now saying, uh, you know, we don't need, you know, the the agencies to step in yet, yeah, blah, blah, blah. But it's it's pretty much inevitable that we will. And so there's either need to be, going to be a uh, change of leadership there or he needs to uh, have a change of heart so that this um, this you know, doesn't happen or, or go yeah. away. You know, question came yeah, up. Totally. Does it hurt your credit to go to do a forbearance? Uh, it hurts your overall credit profile. It doesn't hurt your credit score. So like I said, it'll show as delinquencies. It'll show that you haven't made your mortgage payment, which in some forms of credit that you're applying for could be difficult for you. So it could hurt your ability to get credit. It, like it won't change. It shouldn't change your credit score. Um, I've heard reports from some people that it has, which is why when you call your mortgage servicer, you got to make sure the agreement in writing is really ironclad. It's got to be uh, make sure they're using the right uh, reporting code for the delinquency 032 national disaster delinquency. Um, you got to make sure that your post forbearance options to bring the loan current are, are doable for you. Make sure there's no balloon payment. That would be a pretty aggressive. You know, you either want like a repayment plan or a um, uh, like a flex modification or some sort of modification so that your payment doesn't jump up or you don't have one giant payment all at once because that could put you in in hot water in you know a few months from now. Yeah, and that's, that's happening good. too, right? Like there's if you yeah. if you don't read your forbearance agreement, it's possible if they give you a six month forbearance that after the six months you you're coming up with that payment right then and there. Yeah, that's correct. And you know what? If you're having a hard time with your mortgage servicing company and they're not giving you any other option than a balloon payment to bring your loan current post forbearance, you can go to cfpb.gov, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, cfpb.gov, and you can file a complaint against your mortgage servicer and you can explain what's going on and how they won't offer you any other options other than an aggressive balloon payment. And they will probably reply pretty quickly. Um, mortgage servicers do not like, and banks do not like the CFPB. They're a huge regulatory agency that can that can levy massive fines on you for abusive practices. Now, the CFPB might not do anything because Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have given them guidance that um, you know a a that the option that they're presenting is uh, okay. But if you tell them that it's not okay and you can't afford it and it's not going to work for you and it's going to cause problems, then they should listen to them. They should turn it around. That that could be like one step that you can take to try and try and force their hand a little bit. They might reply favorably to that. By so, the way, the CFPB is great too. If you have like credit card lates or mortgage lates or something you need to get corrected and you're having trouble doing it, file a CFPB complaint. Thank you, Greg. File a CFPB complaint. I've gotten, <laughs> I got a credit card late removed in 24 hours one time. And I've gotten, I got like a dozen student loan lates removed for my client a couple months ago where his credit was tanked because of it. We got her credit up a hundred points in like three weeks because I helped her file a CFPB complaint and got all these lates removed from her student loans. So they're a great resource. Well, let, let me ask you real quick. Uh, is that, yeah. are they, were they removed because they were legitimately mistakes or were, was she at, I, I don't want to talk about her, but were you at so fault that, for your late payment and they just went, you know what, we'll forgive it because we don't want the problems. No, that's a great question. So like if it's a legitimate uh, mistake, like you just were late on your payment, you might have a harder time. She had a good argument and her, um, the Fed loan servicing company didn't agree with her argument. Basically what had happened is she was supposed to be in forbearance. Uh, and then I, I don't remember all the details, but what had happened is like about eight months into it when she wasn't, she realized she wasn't on forbearance, but they told her that she would have been, they, she called them. They said, Oh, it's okay. We'll do a uh, retroactive forbearance. So they sent her a letter saying retroactively, we agree to put your loan in forbearance since January 1st. And it was like July. And she said, great. So she has this letter from them saying that retroactively she didn't need to be making payments the whole year, which she had. But 
they reported all these lates and you know how fed loan, uh, student loans are split up sometimes. So you might have like $40,000 of student loans, but you'll have like seven loans. So she had all these lates, 30, 60, 90 rolling lates, you know, and that really is damaging the credit. And so I, I said, we have this letter here. And so she said, yeah, we tried to go after him, you know, with a lawyer and all this other stuff and nothing worked. And they, we disputed it on credit and, you know, people just need to know those steps just take forever. So just go to the CFPB. We filed the complaint. We uploaded the document. We, um, through the CFPB, you can dispute it with the company and all the credit agencies. So what yeah. happened is Experian came back and they said, hey, we agree with your argument. We're going to mark all of these lates as uh, we're going to change the payment rating to no payment rating because and we're going to mark it as a forbearance period. And that was all we needed because they were only reporting to two of the three bureaus. And uh, when Experian changed theirs, then she had two really good scores. And Glenders, we use the middle score. So you can have a 500 a 700 and an 800, we're going to use the 700. We don't care about the other one. So this totally fixed her credit profile. She went from like the mid sixes to I think like 755. Wow. And it was like that. And, and we deal. have a service. Yeah, we have a software where we can, you know, lenders have software. I don't know about all lenders, but I, I mean, most of them do. Where they can update your credit quickly. You know, if they need to get a score changed because something's wrong or whatever. So anyways, that helped them out a lot. That is awesome. I mean, that's the thing that a lot of people are not talking about. They don't, they know, they hear the word forbearance, but they don't know really what it means. And that even goes along with me. I mean, some of the stuff I'm just kind of like, huh, a forbear what? Mm -hmm. um, you know what? This this is why this, this conversation is important, Greg. I don't mean to jump on your toes there, but. I bet you will. I, yeah, I, but I think it's for a good, only for a good reason. Okay. There, I mean, look, there's people, what I'm noticing is that stuff that, that, you know, you guys know maybe isn't known by the general public. And if you don't know what you don't know, it's hard to figure that stuff out. So like when we yeah. talk about people that are suffering through this right now and you can't pay your mortgage, maybe you can't pay your credit cards, maybe you can't pay your car payment. Like I think there's a misconception. I think people just go, oh, well, then they're just going to come and take my car. When the reality of it is, is that if you do the right things and call the servicer of your loan on that car or the servicer of your loan on your mortgage, there's a pretty decent chance. Like I always tell people, you know this in real estate, Banks don't want to own real estate, right? They don't really want to take your house back. They want to make, if you think about a $300,000 right. mortgage over a 30 year period, they're going to make $700,000 in, in profit from the interest. Like, you know, give or take. They don't want to be managing your asset and worrying about if it's falling apart. Like they don't want your house. So when you call them, a lot of them, like the IRS will go, you know what? We, under we understand. We're, we want to help you. Let's figure out how we can make this work. But you got to make that phone call, right? Like I hear people mm -hmm. saying all the time, like, "Yo, I'm just going to not pay my mortgage payment." Well, no, that's not how it works. You got to, you got to kind of set the expectation and call people. Mm -hmm. You're totally right. Yeah, so lenders, servicers, banks—they do not want to be in the real estate business. It costs them a lot of money to have REO on their books. So that's uh, that's a great way to segue into a question I have for you. <clears throat> With the lenders not wanting to get into the loan business, what loan changes have you seen? I'm hearing a lot of the, a lot of the uh, the the big loans are not going to be able to be done anymore. Um, uh, you know, what else is really going on behind the scenes that us agents are not aware of uh, if we're not doing loans on a daily basis? Yeah, I would say like forty uh, ish percent of loan programs have evaporated. You know, you've got like the non QM market is almost completely gone. Basically, meaning like bank statement loans. Uh, Low doc, alt doc, all the other loans that you would get outside of your conventional Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Jumbo, FHA, VA loans, they're gone. They're just they just evaporated because there's no money in the market. People are not buying them. So they used they used to be sold into REITs uh, and on, on Wall Street. Most of these would, and so you know these Wall Street guys would buy them, but all the guys on Wall Street got uh, they got margin calls, so they had to sell their their assets and kind of pull their money together, and they didn't have money to go buy these you know alt doc REITs that would give them long term you know. Uh, profit so uh other changes i mean a lot of investors have changed their guidelines on fha like not wanting low fha so unless you're an, uh, an fha direct like like we are we sell directly to jenny may uh who buys fha then we don't have any overlays so like we still don't have any minimum credit score requirement but if you have a low credit score it's not cheap like it could be like two point cost if you have like a 600 fico so just know you're gonna have a little extra money but you know you can overcome that you can sell a credit whatever you need to do but it's not impossible so uh, that's changed. Jumbo loans are gone. They're just gone. I mean, we, gosh, there's like, we have like one jumbo lender and it's Chase and every single day they are tightening their guidelines. And uh, <laughs> we, have, we have Wells Fargo too, but we used to have like 10 or 20 of them, you know, and now we've got like three or four 
and the guidelines are narrow and the rates are like a half percent higher than conventional. So they're not that good. What the hell? So wait, yeah, wait, yeah. So let me stop you there real quick. So let me let me see if I understand this. So what you're telling me is if I want to buy a five hundred thousand dollar house or more on a note, I, I can. You five hundred thousand dollar house on yeah, a like note. what's the jumbo loan is what four sixty two or whatever. Oh well, where you are, uh, you're in New York. I'm in PA. You're in PA. I don't know the loan limits out in PA. I know that uh, you know the. the the nationwide low balance loan limit is 510,600. So if you're above that, you probably fall into a jumbo category unless you're in what's considered a high balance county, uh, in which case you could go up to $765,000 uh, loan limit on a single family home if you're in a high balance county. Like most places in the Bay Area are high balance counties. Uh, and then there's other there's other loan limits between there, you know, and you can, you can, there's a chart you can look it up and see. But yeah, if you were above the conventional uh, loan limit, you would have to go for a jumbo loan. And you could get a jumbo loan. Like I think B of A is still doing jumbo loans, but they take like 90 days to do. I mean, they're in there. Oh, kind of shit. Yeah. yeah, wow. That's a, there's one about, so the question on the screen here, I'm getting a lot of questions about a five or 10% down program staying or going away on conventional conforming. Um, Robert, what say you? Yeah, no, I think conventional is staying the same. I mean, we've got all the programs still available from uh, 3% down on up. So I, I don't see any 5 or 10% going away. I mean, we get updates every day, but most of the conventional updates that we're getting are just updates around how we handle, um, you know, things in the COVID atmosphere. So like verbal verifications of employment, we have to do them within one to three days of signing. Um, you know, things like uh, appraisals, like for FHA, we don't, we only need desktop appraisals now on purchases. Um, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac are giving a lot of appraisal waivers. Uh, they're allowing us to do drive-by appraisals if we actually need an appraisal. So, but I haven't seen anything in, in regards to tightening of the guidelines. Uh, that may be because we're direct seller servicers. Investors will put overlays on this because they want to mitigate their, they want to mitigate their risk. They don't want to be giving out loans that they think might go belly up or going to forbearance shortly after they close. If a loan goes into forbearance or default shortly after it closes, you get what's called an EPD, an early payment default. So uh, that that results in huge fines to the originating lender. So I, I don't I think that there will probably be exceptions regarding the forbearance to lenders, um, but not default. So if somebody loses their job and, you know, they're just afraid of what could what the possibilities are behind that. Um, that's why there's a lot of changes in guidelines like down programs have evaporated. Interesting. So what do you see in regards to how, how are we, everyone's always rah, 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 team, everybody, you know, uh, it, it, it's very, I like how everyone's coming together, but there's also, I think a false sense of security in regards to where this market's going. We're all hoping and praying and crossing our toes, eyes and fingers and legs and everything else to, mm -hmm. to get this thing over and pop out the other, other end of this thing, you know, unscathed, you know, where do you see, you know, the, the real estate industry, where do you see the mortgage industry ending up at the end of this thing? Well, let's say <clears throat> in reality, we're not going to be coming out of this thing until probably until like July. I mean, uh, in all actuality, you know, and then mm -hmm. it's still going to be very tenuous. You know, people are not going to mm -hmm. be glumping together at a hundred thousand together to go watch a baseball game. Unfortunately, fuck, I bought my, I got my tickets for the giants and now I can't go to my Gotham club. God damn it. <sighs> so butthurt about that. But you know, the thing is, is that like, what are we, is this our new normal? Is this our reality? Is this the way we're going to be living? I mean, is, are we not going to do jumbo loans? I mean, are, what are you guys seeing in the whispering on the, on the mortgage side? And what are you doing to help people mitigate this and work through this, you know, on the agent side, the people you work with? Yeah, that's a great question. Those are all great questions. Um, you know, the answer is multifaceted. Let's start with the jumbo loan question. So, um, those jumbo loans aren't sold into securities. They aren't packaged as securities by the agencies and sold in the secondary market in the same way that um, conventional loans are. So they're completely different on the back end. So when liquidity comes back into the market, which it will, uh, there's a lot of different speculations on how the market will recover. People, some people say it'll be like a V recovery where you know we went down, then we're going to shoot back up. I don't mm -hmm. think that's the case. So I don't think you should go take all your money and put it in the market right now. Um, I think the recovery period will be two to three years because when you have uh, – losses that are this great, then when you get through your quarterly earnings reports, I don't think you're going to see like stocks rallying, you know, when you see uh, giant blue chip companies who are losing money, like that's not going to make stocks go through the roof. And right now you have huge volatility right now. And remember in this day and age with, with quantum trading and, and the way that uh, trading happens, it's a lot different than it happened like, you know, decades ago. 
the lows are exaggerated and highs are exaggerated. So like the stock market rallied yesterday because there was some promising news that came out about a new, you know, test trial drug. It was helping some people. It's like that is not real news. Like that's that's hope. And that's how the market changes on hope. So, you know, whoo, huge surge rallies in the stock market. That's not sustainable. So recovery is really going to take a little bit of time, liquidity to get back into the market. And once it does, these programs will open back up. But it could be two to three years before you see like a full plethora of products like flooding back into the market. Um, I don't think it's just going to be like, hey, the pandemic's over. Now let's turn on all these programs again like that, because the people on the second uh, on the, these institutional investors are the ones who have to buy them. Institutional investors have institutional investing uh, you know, licenses. Basically, they're trading upwards of 30 million dollars, usually way, way, way more than that. And they're buying, you know, huge uh, amounts at a time. They have to have the money to buy these, 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 these REITs. You know, you might spend a billion dollars in one of these REITs. And if you just got out of a season where you had all your money margin called, I mean, you know how much money you lose when you get a margin call? It's huge. I mean, if you have your, let's say you have your money with Charles Schwab and you have a million dollars in there and it's all invested in the market. And then you have a line of credit against that million. That's your margin uh, loan. And you have, let's say eight or $700,000 on it. Then let's say that that dips below like uh, what you have borrowed or it's getting close to it, they won't even give you a notification. Like they'll say you have 20, well, they might, they'll be like, you have 24 hours to pay back your margin loan money or we're selling your stock. So when you get a margin call, uh, if you don't have the liquidity to pay back your money, which a lot of people didn't, a lot of institutional investors didn't because they didn't expect this, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, boom, they sell your stock and you just took a 40, 50% loss on whatever you had uh, overnight. That's huge. That's real money that just evaporated like that. So that, that's not going to come back quickly. It's going to take time. You know, a number that I think we're going to see today is the GDP. That's going to be a really, uh, 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 that's going to be an indication of, of, you know, how bad this really is because, you know, recession, one of the numbers we look at is GDP that yeah, that can be really low. So uh, back to your question, uh, what's the Which recovery? One? <laughs> Our program's going to come back. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a little while though. It's not going to be quick. You know, we have a, a good dear friend, Miss Veronica Jones from Texarkana, Texas. Hello, my dear friend. Uh, she's saying um, she just wants to go have a beer in a bar with people. Robert, don't tell me <laughs> it will be, it will take me many years. Oh, no, um, no, no. That's not, you can have a beer. That's not, that's different. Like when people are going to go out, it's going to be sooner. That, you know, I hear people saying that, that we're not going to be going out in huge gatherings until there's a vaccine. And I think that's probably true. I think once this subsides, you'll see more people going out. But to have everybody just comfortable going out, going to baseball games, going to concerts, going to big, you know, fest, whatever it is, you've got to have some sort of um, stop. You got to have a vaccine in place. Otherwise, you know what's what? to say it's not going to break out again? True that. But I am the guy in the supermarket with flip flops on, no gloves, no mask, just cruising through like I'm heading to the beach for the for for a Friday or for a Saturday afternoon, <laughs> and I get the dirtiest looks from people that they're all looking at me like sinner. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> I'll do what I want. Um, so with the doom and gloom behind us a little bit, I want to talk about some of the fun things that you're doing uh, to help real estate agents. And uh, one of my favorites is something is that you call hops and houses. Um, so to walk us through a little bit of what hops and speaking houses is. Yeah, speaking of beers, exactly. Right. What are hops and, yeah, I, hops and houses? Well, I love beer and I have a dear friend, Valerie Kroll. Uh, who's a real estate agent in Concord with Keller Williams. Uh, and she's very cool. She rescues Dobermans. She's a world record holder for weightlifting. She's got Damn. in her 60s and she has 30 world records for uh, powerlifting. Um, and so she's a lot, we have a lot of fun together uh, and she loves beer as well. So we kind of rallied around that and we decided about a year ago, let's do a, a video series called Hops and Houses where we go around to different breweries and we drink beer and we talk about the real estate market. So I got all this camera equipment and these lights, which is what I'm using right now. And we go around and we just sit at, at, at breweries and we drink beer and we talk about the real estate market. We did, we've done a lot of fun ones. We've gotten a lot of cool breweries. We've done one in the back of my truck. We backed it up on my lawn. It was like a redneck version. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we just bullshit. We just talk about real estate and lending and we drink beer and we talk, we, you know, we talk about the beer we're drinking and we have a lot of fun. Usually we edit the videos. We make them really cool looking and they're like five to 10 minutes or whatever. But lately we've just been doing zoom lives for like an hour. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's fantastic. And the reason why I like this idea so much, I mean, as you guys all know, I've been doing beers and calls for a long period of time where I get on, the, get on, do live cold calls and drink a beer, right? But I mm -hmm. like the fact that you're out, Robert, you're out and about, you're, you're hanging out with a, with a real estate agent, you're in the public eye, and you're just having fun, you're being real. And I, I don't want a lot of us to go into our holes 
uh, during this pandemic time period in our lives and just hide under a rock and be like, oh my God, well, everyone, I don't want to get anybody sick and I, I can't be out there helping anyone. When in reality, this is when you need to double down, quadruple down on um, being visible. I mean, really yeah, creating yeah, a lot of content, you know? Yeah. And one of the things I went out and bought myself is $128 out the door is this little bad boy. This is the DJI Mobile Gimbal 3, which the wow. more research I've done on this thing, this thing is absolutely 100% worth its money. Has stabilization, story mode, has all kinds of other cool shit you can do with this thing. Uh, but the point is, is that, you know, I bought this little guy so I can go become more visible to my database on a consistent basis. I also have a running list here of 20... Uh, show titles that I'm, I just filmed two of them and I got 28 more to go of titles so I can become searchable with SEO here in my local area. And so people, I can go type this stuff in when people search this stuff on YouTube, they'll, I'll pop up. There's a thing called keywords anywhere. I've talked about several times, excuse me, I'm drinking bubbly water. <laughs> <laughs> it's not beer. It's too early for that. Um, but, um, you know, keywords anywhere for $10, you get a hundred thousand keyword searches and you probably take you at least a year to use them all. But in the, in the another thing called tube buddy, where you can go check test headlines and kind of create, you know, YouTube stuff and become much more visible. That's why I love this beers, hops and houses, excuse me, hops and houses. Um, Gene, if you were to do a series, I know you're doing a lot of stuff on video right now. What's something that you would do or you are doing in regards to staying visible for your clients you know, when everyone's kind of locked in their houses? Uh, so actually, it's funny. Uh, a viewer of this show, um, and I don't, I'm not going to screw his name up because I, I talked to him today on Zoom, but one of the things he was talking about doing was going out when things got better and going out to local restaurants and kind of doing what you were doing a little a couple months back. Remember when you were going to these restaurants and interviewing the manager? Mm -hmm. And he's he's a big happy hour guy. And I said to him, why wouldn't you start that here? Like do it on a Zoom meeting, like have a glass of wine ready to go. Bring on a local bartender from a local spot or a local chef. Have them show how to make a drink on the air and promote the restaurant for, you know, because they're doing takeout still. So like I think right now is a really good because who's going to say no to that? Everybody's got enough time. Everybody's mm -hmm. got enough energy. People are looking for the income. So they're looking for new customers to come. And if you get attention on their business because you have a Zoom going with and you're drinking virtually, I think that's a great move. I just wrote that down. Literally, I wrote that down as something to do. I think that that, that could not get any better. I mean, right. And you're doing everything you want to do. Like you're having a drink, you're talking business, you're pushing people towards the business that you, that you like, and you want to see stay in business. Cause when this all lifts, you want to go back and have a beer or a glass of wine there. Right. So oh God, you, you know, the small things in life. Holy fuck. I, that's what I miss. People keep saying to me, like, what do you miss? I'm like, I miss the gym and I yep. miss being yeah. able to go out and have a beer at, at a restaurant. That's what I want. Me too. And chicken wings. Let's not forget chicken wings, people. That's an important Chicken. facet of, of human life. Um, Robert, talk to me a little bit about, you know, the interaction and how you guys got going with uh, hops and houses. And, you know, when w have you run across folks or when you run across folks that have been watching you, you know, is it a is it kind of a celebrity kind of, oh, my God, dude, I've been watching your hops and houses for a while. And I, oh my, I love that last beer you had it, blah, blah, blah. And how, what's been the reaction and interaction you've gotten from the consumers that have viewed it? Yeah, it's been great. We've had, I have had people that I run into that say that they don't know, which is fun. I mean, it's not, we've got like less than a hundred people that follow the page, but you know, Valerie's really popular on her page and she tags me when we do the live videos. So like a lot of people see it uh, and interact and I've gotten some refinances out of it, some clients out of it. That's nice. Um, it's been an overall positive reaction. You know, it's nice to go to like the real estate meetings and people are like, Hey, I love watching your videos. Um, you know, it's, I, it's, you just gotta be present. And I like, I like the reaction that we've had so far from that. So okay. we did it just to be fun. I mean, we both like beer and we're both good friends and we're funny together. So it was like, well, let's put this on camera. <laughs> so can we do, let's, I, I want to ask a couple questions, right? So number yeah. one, you're using Untapped, I would think, right? Yes, I use Untapped. Okay. And have you heard of Tavor? No. I mean, listen, oh. we're, we're going to talk beer. Let's talk beer, Greg. Tell me about beer. Tavor. Dude, Tavor is my boy. Um, it's okay. right here. It's, it's an app on your phone. Um, here, let me pull it up real quick. I'll show you guys what Tavor is. Yeah, it's T-A-V-O-U-R. Just so this is Tavor okay. is going to pop up, and it gives you a bunch of different beers that you can 
Oh man, I got to sign in. God damn it. Anyways, you go get custom beers from this thing from Tavor and they will ship a crate of, um, uh, a beer to you whenever you order it. And which oh, reminds cool. me, Gene, I got to re I got to reach back out to him, get another crate of beer. I totally haven't done that in so long. So the one thing that I love about it, Rob, is that uh, what happens is that so they set all the beer they send you is stuff like you typically don't find in the store. So this be it'll be all throughout the country, and it's always and they do a great job presenting it. They look mm -hmm. the, don't the beers look great? Like every single beer looks amazing. But nice. what they what they'll let you do is so let's say you start at the first of the month. So today mm -hmm. they bring they launch ten new beers, and you see two of them that you like. So you buy two of each. So you get two of the IPAs and two of the New England IPAs. They they charge you for them right there. So this is bo both awesome and dangerous. They charge you for them right there, and they put them in your quote unquote crate. At the end of the month, when they ship you, they ship you everything you bought in the previous month. Oh, cool! Yeah, so you can get they, look how great that's. They do a great job presenting it. Nice, and they make the beer specially for you. No, 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 no. So the, it's all different companies, all breweries from out the country, through all all, oh, all over awesome. the country, and they just oh, basically. Very cool. Yeah, they downloaded. It. It's really good. We've we have a we had a podcast. It's been on hold for a little bit, but um, we had a podcast called Barbells and Brews, and they sponsored it. So they would ship us the crate nice. of beer. We would talk about the stuff we were doing to keep our health in line, and while we were reviewing the beer, they sent us. That's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. That's very cool. I'm gonna sign up for that. It was yeah. fun. I'll do, I'm gonna do this real quick. Can I share screen? I can't. Okay. So let's do this, guys, and for you guys, beer lovers, let me know when you guys can see this. Yeah, it's up there, yep. So this is Tavor, um, and you can go in and you can kind of craft your own, what, what you want. Like, they talk about the different types of beers. Um, nice. It's actually really cool. Let's see if I can get a gifts, blog, sell your beer, buy Tavor. You know what? This is totally impromptu, and I'm going to stop this because it's going to look stupid. <laughs> um, <laughs> can I... Um... Chat for a second about uh, no. an article that I found really impactful recently. Sure, what's up? Okay, so uh, I I have I am lucky to have a very good manager who's a, a huge top producer in the industry and a coach and, and a leader and a lot of people look to him and so he sent everybody in his little circle this this article the other day from Renee um, Zellweger. This guy, I don't remember Renee's last name off the top of my head. I always just see Renee on my, but see Renee speak.com is so he's got 10 leadership brands that you don't want. He talks about leadership during this time. And I think it's really important for the people watching because we're real estate agents, loan officers, you know, people are looking to you. They're looking to what you're posting and they're looking for leadership, right? Like you mentioned pattern interrupt. How do we get mm -hmm. positive to negative to interrupt the negative that's going And There's so much negative. And he really broke this down. Well, you know, he said uh, in the beginning of the article, I'll just do a cliff notes of it. He said, I sat back in the beginning, watching what are people saying what are people posting how are people leading um and he said what i found is there's 10 leadership styles that i'm seeing that you don't want to follow and i'll just briefly go over those Interesting. one is the jester the comedian everything is a joke it's always a meme uh they're never serious you know uh you know it says you can count on the jester to ensure that you're up to speed on critical events like the tiger king or reminding us that epstein didn't kill himself they post 87 <laughs> memes <laughs> and come out with a futile attempt at inspiration or advice that just seems out of place. Might be great advice, but it feels like you just found a cereal box in the fridge. It doesn't fit, right? <laughs> <laughs> then he goes, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say Tiger King and Epstein, Epstein didn't kill himself. I'm like, those are two very good topics. But right? did she or did she not feed her husband to the tigers? We don't know. Well, I don't know, but that, that song keeps getting stuck in my head. Carol Baskin killed her husband <laughs> and whacked him. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Okay, so then there's Johnny Tone Deaf. Uh, he means well, but he doesn't get it. Seems to lack connection to how people are feeling around them and what the general sentiment is. He jokes at the wrong time, tries to inspire when he should listen. Uh, posts from his giant hot tub with the perfect family when uh, he doesn't realize a lot of people don't have these things. You know, then he goes on to Amy Alarmist, and she's out there, you know, prepare yourself for Armageddon, batten down the hatches. You know, these phrases are often used by Amy Alarmist. We got to know Amy well during Y2K, anthrax, Ebola, bird flu, Zika, and any other crisis we've ever seen. Uh, then there's Andy Apathy. Not much to say here. He just doesn't give a shit. He never will. <laughs> he never has. All right. But we're talking about leadership styles. Like these people are out there. You're going to see them on your Facebook. But the, if you're a leader in your community, if you're a real estate agent or a loan officer or an insurance agent, you're somebody watching this, people are looking to you. 
So what you spread is going to have a ripple effect more so than maybe other people that don't have a sphere of influence that are watching them on a regular basis. Then there's care and conspiracy. You know, the government created COVID-19 and the bill is responsible. Bill Gates is responsible for 5G and they're going to put a chip in my arm. You know, okay. Okay. okay, I volunteer right? to fall in that category. <laughs> yeah. And then there's Sally Spin. No matter what the news is, she always finds a way to make it political and is passionate about her political arguments. Then there's uh, Pollyanna. Everything will be just fine if we adopt, adopt an abundant mindset, you know, and, and he's like, I'm all for healthy optimism, but when optimism ignores the realities of life, it can be dangerous. And you know, he's right. And then there's Bobby Selfish. Bobby's prepared. He's got money in the bank. He has a plan for himself and his family, and that's all. You know, he's circled the wagons and is successfully keeping others out. You know, this is a really great time where we can help others. If you have abundance and you have the ability to help other people, you should totally do it. Don't be Bobby mm -hmm. Selfish. And the last one is Arnie Armchair. Arnie is typically found on Monday mornings after Sunday football, telling everyone what they should have done or what the coaches should have done. Uh, and so he goes through this whole, you know, personality profile on Arnie. But basically, he's never going to tell you what we need to do and what's going to happen in the future. He always is looking back saying, oh, well, they should have done this differently. And if you read the news right now, you see that just nonstop. You know, oh, they didn't do yeah. this right. They didn't do this. And it's like th those are 10 leadership styles you want to completely avoid. And his conclusion is really simple. Uh, he just go, he says, if you can help somebody, help them, um, pay attention to what people post on social media. Cause we are the media. Now we influence people and how they mm -hmm. see the world. If your post creates fear, then we have a name for you. If it lacks emotional intelligence, we have a name for you. If it's propaganda, we have a name for you. So he says, take a moment, uh, try to be empathetic. You know, empathy is a great quality mm -hmm. in leaders right now. Try to avoid these 10 things, be balanced in your approach you know, know what your narrative is and what it's causing, what effects it's having and find ways to be uh, helpful and be valuable to people during this time. Because a lot of people were scared out of their minds, you know? No, that's uh, true. They, they, and, they and, really are. And we can help that. So yeah. is, is that MBS by, by any chance? MBS? Yeah. Barry? No, that's, uh, that's, uh, Rene Rodriguez. So if you go to crenespeak.com, uh, C S E E R E N E speak.com, uh, it's his blog and you can see it's one of his most recent, um, most recent articles. And Rene is a great guy to follow. I mean, I, I get a lot from what he posts, but this was just, this was gold. You know, this is really, awesome. he's done a Ted talk, um, but he's really in touch with, you know, how to, how to help people. I love that. I mean, I, I'm all in it for helping folks. I mean, I think that that is definitely something that we should, um, you know, put more time into. And, and I don't know why it has to take place during the pandemic for people to go like, oh, my fellow man or my fellow woman, you know, next to me or in the trenches or in the foxhole or whatever else, you know, and I should really care about you. In in actuality, mm -hmm. most people give less than one flying fuck about you know, 99% of the population out there because, you know, you know, in all actuality, the four ways that we see another human being is, you know, well, the four different, different types. And this is why, you know, Starbucks or bars are not like a love festival. Bars are sometimes a love fest with everyone to kind of come up and talk to each other is because, you know, the first and dominant response when you see another human being is basically you have no value to me. And that's why yeah. people do not come up and, you know, go and, you know, say hi to each other on the streets all the time because you're just, you, you bring no value to my life, you know, in, in our brain. The second one yeah. is that you're a, you're a foe or you're, you're something to be feared. You, you're something that could potentially hurt me. Uh, the yeah. next one is going to be a friend or someone I can hang out with. And then the last mm -hmm. one is a potential sexual partner. And so, you know, with those four defaults, number one being, you don't, you bring zero value to my life. I think that we should shift that a little bit and on a consistent basis, not just in COVID, not just in anything else in life, but just all the time. You know, what, how can you walk up to someone and be like, Hey, how are you? Good to see you. How can I help you? It's not, it's not, you know, a dog eat dog world. It seems to be right now. It seems like we have a little more empathy and I don't understand. Yeah. I want to hear Gene and, uh, and Robert, your guys' thoughts on this, but I mean, why do you think the human being as a whole uh, sometimes just curls up and wants to protect itself and doesn't want to help other one out, everyone out unless it's cool to do so. Help me out. Help me understand this one. Gene, go first on this one. Yeah, uh, you left me hanging out there. Uh, why do we, so wait, ask me the question again. Why, why do, do we, people, why do people not have empathy for towards each other except for in times of panic? Why in the, on the norm six weeks ago, 
Okay. If we saw someone walking down the street, you could give them the finger just as much as give them a hug and we wouldn't think anything about it if they cut you off. So all right, let me see if I can spin this where it makes sense. I feel like convenience is is what's breeding all the evil in our worlds right now. And what I mean by that is we have access to so much information so quickly that when we don't get it, it it angers us, right? But in also in that fight is the fact that there's so much information being fed to us, we think we're busier than we are. And in that busyness, I think we become less personal with people in our space. And I find myself doing it. Like I think this quarantine forced me to slow down and I realized how much I actually like the other people in my house. And I started to reflect on that a little bit. And what I realized I was doing was I was always in such a fervent hurry that I had no time for these little things that they were trying to get me to do, help with homework, finish, clean the room, whatever it ends up being. And therefore that was annoying. And when I was forced to slow down a little bit and really see what's going on around me, it actually make, made pulled me closer to those people as opposed to fall, fall away from them. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And, you know, uh, Robert, what about you? Yeah, so, I mean, the, the question, I mean, you, the question is why do people act the way they do during these times? I mean, one is, uh, I think people are just sheep. It's like if you are in a crowd of people and somebody starts clapping, your subconscious natural reaction to that is to clap as well, even though if you don't have any idea what we're clapping for, you'd be clapping for a Nazi. You know, you don't know what it is. It's like, oh, I'm clapping for evil. Oh, sorry. Oops. You know, my bad. So it's like, I think people just follow the leader and it takes, uh, it, it, take, it takes a leader, it takes someone to be intentional, uh, Gene, like you mentioned, and do a pattern interrupt and be positive in a time when everybody else is being negative. And the other thing is, you know, we have basic instincts and it, it's layered, right? So you have like, um, you talk about, you people talk about your reptilian brain, uh, I forget the three ones, but there's a survival instinct in there. And so yeah. a lot of times people are thinking often about themselves, you know, your brain analyzes three times per second. Uh, how it can save your life and, and ward off threats. So you're constantly thinking about me, 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 three times a second. You know, that's what, what is that like over 200 times a minute. So, yeah, to stop all that noise and to go, how can I help other people? You really have to be intentional about it. And to be intentional about it, you have to practice that. And if you don't practice that, you're not going to be that way. So, so, you know, if you follow the uh, herd and you clap when other people clap and you're not uh, really cognizant of these things, uh, you're going to fall into that and it's going to be, you know, you're going to be judging other people. You're going to be the alarmist. You're going to be rude. But if you're like Gene mentioned, uh, positive, optimistic, you're helping people, you're practicing these things, you're developing a discipline that's going to that's going to carry with you for the rest of your life. Like my friend Renee, he said, adversity does not build character. It reveals it. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, how do you build character? You be nice to people. And that's just it, it, it takes practice. So I think that's why people were like that fear. You know Herd mentality, cheaple, et cetera. No, I, I agree with you. It, 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 you know, fear definitely reveals the true colors of people, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's the fight or flight. It's the, are you going to be a nice human being? Or are you going to be out for yourself? You know, are you truly have your client's best interest or, or in this time of you know uncertainty, uh, are you just going to sh shove people into properties that may or may not be the best fit for them because you need a paycheck because you overextended yourself? Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of, you know, there's going to be a lot of, un unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of folks that may or may not get divorced or separate or break up or anything else because they realize, oh my God, I don't want to spend time with this, this other human being or other people like Gene who doubled down and goes, oh my God, the people I live with are the most incredible human beings on earth. I'm super blessed. Um, you know, there's just a lot of life shifts and life changes. Um, and so on, so to wrap this thing up really quickly, I want to quickly, you know, ask each one of you guys a, a question. And the question is this, if you were six weeks in the past, right? And you, you were the only person knew that was going to be, you know, this was going to be coming down the pipe. What would you have done six weeks ago to prepare for where you are right now? Robert, we'll start with you first. Um, gosh, I don't want to say that I knew this was coming down the pipe, but I, I thought that it was six weeks ago. So I think two months ago, I mean, I, I don't know, man. I, two months ago, I started saving my money and paying off debt and thinking, how do I prepare for a difficult time? Because I think it's going to happen. Six weeks ago, I thought it might come to this because I followed Bill Gates for a long time and he always talks about 
uh, you know, the biggest threat to humanity is not nuclear weapons. It's not all these other things. It's it's a global pandemic. So when this all started to happen, I thought, you know, this has the ability to get out of hand really quickly and change the dynamic of our culture a lot. So I, I, I honestly, for me, it's probably not the best. I'm not, not the best person to ask because lenders have been slammed. So I've just had my head down. I've been working, I've been literally going to the grocery store and coming back. And that's been my life for the last, you know, four to six weeks. Um, and I mean, it's, it's only been recently that I've tried to uh, really be intentional and, and kind of look at myself and go, how am I presenting myself outwardly to other people? How am I helping people? Um, I, okay. I, 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 I might, I may not be the best person to ask because I've been so busy. It's been a little bit difficult to. Okay. You know. That's fair enough. Yeah. Gene, let's ask you that question. If you, bef prior to the pandemic, let's say you had a monthly. So we're talking about January. No one had a whiff of this really, you know, what would you have done? If you were the one person that knew this was coming, what would you do to alter your business? It's a, uh, I probably would have done a lot of things. I think right now, I don't know. I would have been quicker to to the to the punch on changing the services a little bit. I think I've done some things over the last couple of weeks uh, that surround these circumstances, or at least to to kind of counteract these circumstances for a lot of my marketing clients. And I wish I would have done that from day one if I would have jumped out of the gate and said, hey, these times are changing. Here's what we're going to do to, to make sure that you're you're coming out the other end uh, in the right spot with, after this is done. I think it just took me longer than I expected to really get a handle on the, the changing dynamic of the marketing world. Okay. Interesting. All right. So you would have jumped ahead a little bit, kind of what you're saying. Like you would have been so. done more video. What? Yeah, well... For sure. I think I would have probably gotten better at a plan. So the one thing I can tell you is that this is a time where if you if you think you don't have enough time to market, there's something going wrong in your in your business, in your house, because you, you have time for everything right now. So I would have put together a better plan for people to sit down and say, hey, if you want to do this on your own, these are the things I recommend you do every single day for the next 60 days. And you're going to be good at the end of this. And video is, you know, video is number one on that list. Yeah, of course. I mean, it, it, it is the absolute king right now and, and should should be king. I mean, guys, the, the, the old saying still rings true when they say a, a, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, I'll ask both of you guys, you know, what is 30 seconds of video worth if a picture is worth a thousand words? How many words is a 30 second clip? 10 million. <laughs> it's not quite that big. 1.8 million. But <laughs> You're right. Yeah, it's extreme. You guys should be doing some stuff. You should go, you know, go get an Osmo, you know, uh, you know, DJI little, you know, gimbal three, which I can't tell you how, how impressed I am with this little contraption. It is unbelievably. Why? Awesome. What's it doing for you? What do you like so much about it? Dude, it just, it, it, it can go into story mode. It has stabilization. What's, what's, what's story mode mean? They have like different uh, pre-done stories for like Instagram and Facebook that you can shoot them. The camera, you know, you pick which one you want. It will automatically do the twists and turns, put the, you know, the, you know, the filters to it, put the music behind it. Then wow. you can upload wow. it so you can really kind of characterize and have some fun with what, whatever you're doing. I'll show you guys some of the stuff that I, I shot one of them so far. I picked the wrong one. It's for travel and I shot my lake and my pond out here in my yard. But I mean, um, it, it, it just helps you get like silky smooth video quality when you're walking. Uh, it has a, a, a time lapse fact f feature on it. So you can put it at, like a busy intersection. Like I shot that two days ago at a busy intersection in downtown Danville. And I got all the cars whizzing by. So I can put that as B roll behind some of my other clips. Um, it has, you know, the, the speed up. So when you're like, if you're going to walk across the street from one side to the other, you know, do it and speed it up. I mean, it just has face tracking capabilities. So I can, I can draw a square on my face and then step back or I can do hand signals. It will lock on to my, my, the first face it sees and it will track me through crowds. So I can do real moving and, you know, moving and shaking or run, uh, running and gunning, uh, video work, just put it on a tripod you know, put a lavalier on and now that it's got my face, well, I can go walk fucking 50 feet away or however long. And this thing will track my face as I move. So it'll keep me center framed. It's like having a videographer on a stand. It's That's really cool. What is awesome. It? It's called the DJI mobile three. Here, I'll gimbal three. I'll, I'll show you guys. Osmo. O S M O. Wow. Deb Gleason cool. said, did you fix the flipping upside down thing? 
<laughs> I did. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> that was hilarious when I saw that happen. <laughs> yeah, I've, on the other gimbals, I've used gimbals before, and they flip upside down on me, too. I'm terrible at those things. Uh, dude, this thing, I, I just had to figure it out, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so this is the DJI Gimbal 3, guys, if you guys want to take a look at it. Uh, share, share, share. This is it right here. This is the stand that it comes in. Um, you can get the stand or don't have the stand. I don't have the stand. I have another tripod. But I mean, this thing can shoot landscape or vertical. Um, it's just it's just a really simple, easy way of filming. Nice. And it comes you can in, use either camera. Yeah, you can switch back and forth to either camera. Um, not while filming, you have to pick one while you film. But the the silky smooth run on this thing is just, I mean, it gives you butter for, for fucking videos. And that's awesome. that's, nice. for, I think, 128 out the door came with a charging thing, uh, this little baggie. Wow. Um, that's all you really need. Um, you definitely get a tripod if you can to do some time lapse stuff, but it's fucking epic. Like, and then what do, you, what do you do? You put it on, a, like, there's an app that goes on your phone? Yeah, there's an app that you download. It will sync up to it, and then it will start doing everything. They have beauty mode on there. So if you, you want to, let's say you got a sunburn, you want it to like, mellow out, or you're too white, you want to put a little color in your cheeks, so you can beauty mode it up for yourself. Um, I'm still in the middle of, of fucking with this thing, but I'll tell you one thing. Like, I for $128 out the door on Amazon, I could not be happier if I tried. Nice. I mean, it's probably nice. the best thing I've shot with. That's what I'm saying. Like for video, this is such an opportunity to double down and really kind of go deep on stuff that maybe you hadn't thought about doing. Like Robert, you and I both live in the Walnut Creek area, right? So yeah, go out, go out and you know film the. You you've seen those like the historical walking tours through Walnut Creek? Mm -hmm. um, go there, stop by a sign, you know, talk about what happened in the area, get some B-roll of footage or video or clips from you know what has gone on in the past and you guys put together a video doing something like on Streamyard or something like that or have a production team behind those you know behind the scenes do something for like 10 to 15 dollars an hour i mean that's just yeah. there's no reason not to double down on this stuff and for these totally. i mean i used to i have a big old camera like, i'm like you robert i got a big old camera i got lights i got everything now mm -hmm. all i need is this that's awesome yeah awesome. That's cool phone yeah there's a cool app that i'm using right now um called mix cams have you guys seen that no no it allows you to use both your front and back camera at the same time and record mix cam yeah mix cam and you can um you can change like if it's you can do half and half on the screen or you can make oh. one smaller one bigger so like if you're doing like a reaction video and you're like filming something that you want people to see a reaction to it you can so it's fun it's a lot of fun what do you use an iphone yeah mm -hmm. I wonder if it's available for the Android. I think it is. Yeah. Uh, I said it said mix cam. I'm gonna look it up or go oh, mix cam. And this then is Greg, Greg, go back. You were talking about there were two things you were talking about. One, and it was in the same breath. One was Tube Buddy, and the other one was something else. What was the other thing? <laughs> yeah, I was going pretty quick. So Tube Buddy, and then the other one is uh, Keywords Anywhere. That is the other one. Uh, and keywords anywhere. Um, here, I'll show you guys. Let me see this right here. So let's look at. I'm just gonna pull this up. And go. I'll, I'll show you guys what this is. It, it, it helps me go out there and search. Share screen. Share screen. Share screen. Share screen. So I went over here and I just I just typed in the word Danville. Well, you can see here all the different searches. So Danville searched 18,100 times a month. Uh, Danville Weathers, 12,100. Danville Restaurants, 6,600. Danville Zip Code, 2,900. You know, as you can see, Danville Costco searched 590 times. Danville Library, 2,400, so on and so forth. What it does then, it comes over here and it shows you, like, let's just search this, right? Just Danville. Um, it'll pop that up, but it'll also show me like Danville VA will show me all these different things and how many times they're searched, the cost per click for marketing, and then what your competition is. You want this to be as low as possible. And so when you're looking for SEO, um, like Zillow searched 16, 16, 16,600,000 times a month. So if you do something on Zillow, you can rank on, on doing video. But I mean, this is how I am. I'm working on getting my, um, 
my Thank SEO you. and searchability up. And it costs $10. Plugin? Yeah, it's a plugin. It costs $10 for 100,000 keyword searches. So, I mean, and what's the name of it again? Keywords Anywhere. Keywords Everywhere. Cool. Make sure, make sure I'm not completely leading you guys. Yeah, keywords everywhere. Nice. I'm down everywhere. Keywords everywhere. Um, it's just that it's a plug-in. Plug it in, guys. Uh, it's super awesome. Nice. God, I have so many, so many plugins. I know. I, I just, I just downloaded this new app that uh, Robert, you were telling us about. Yeah, Mixcam. I can't mm -hmm. wait to fuck with this thing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, fun. this is a. Well, this is not only fun, it's also very um, proactive in today's market. If you want to go out and show a property yep. or do a walk through a property, people can be seen totally. all sides of front and back real time. So, show me, yeah. show me, you know, Greg, before we put it down, show me the icon. Uh, it's this thing. It's like there's blue. Also, there's also, yeah. yeah, blue with like old faces or something. I don't know. Mixed yeah, cam. I don't think yeah, I have. Yeah, there's also an app that will prompt you to download called uh, Mix Captions, and it'll automatically listen to your video and caption it too, which I love because so many people watch videos that have, you know, without the sound yeah, on. Yeah, so. that's pretty good. Wait, what's it called? Yeah, Mix Captions. I hate doing captions on video editing. It just drives me nuts. So, uh, yeah, it's a pain. It is, it is a pain. <laughs> yeah, it is. Dude, I, I, you're, I love this. I love this. I'm like, oh, this is so great. All these videos, I can just now they can capture it for me. Okay. Yeah, so you do a walkthrough, you caption the video. I mean, that's that's cool. That's gonna get so much more engagement if you post that. Oh my god. Mix cam and mix captions. Two phenomenal uh places for people to go check shit out. Um, let's look, guys, we, we have run a little bit over, so let's get us the fuck out of here. Um sure. Mr. Robert Ring, uh, tell everyone a little bit about you, where they can come and hang out with you and all the other goodness. Yeah, thanks. Um, you can find you go to robertringteam.com. It's got all my information uh, there. I do home loans. I'm happy to help you or your clients uh, through a refinance or give you guidance uh, about forbearance, et cetera. Um, I'm also really active in the purchase market. I can help with that. We're a nationwide lender. So anywhere in the country, if you want to use my services, you are welcome to. As you can see on the screen here, I've got five star reviews. I have those on uh, Yelp, Zillow, Facebook, and Google. Um, and we have a big team and a wide product array. So um, you'll be, you and your clients will be in good hands. I'm having too much fun with Rock. That's awesome. Dude. Robert Ring, the man, the myth, the legend. Don't forget, guys, you got to go take a look at his uh, show on Facebook, The Hops and Houses. Give him some love on that uh, for talking about some stuff. But uh, Evil Bald Ninja. Yeah, where buddy. can we find where can we find you? Uh GeneVolby.com. Actually, you got the GVI logo up there. GVI Media.com mm -hmm. is the uh, agency. GV GeneVolpe.com is the uh mm -hmm. personal speaking website. And you know, Gene Volpe anywhere across any kind of social media. I'm pretty easy to see and pretty easy to find. So that is awesome. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate it. As you guys know, we are real estate uncensored. We have been, we always will be coming and hanging out with you guys. Oh, I can't do it. Damn it. I'm going, going the wrong way. There I am. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Too much fun with too little time. And there's Gene. All right, guys. Want to go check it out? If you guys want to come over and hang out with me on um, beers and calls, generally on uh, Monday through Thursday on Facebook and now YouTube Live, where I do live phone calls and I will be drinking a beer. So come hang out with me. We'll like and follow me, guys, and we'll take it from there. Um, if you guys like us, please give us a five star review. Um, and we'll take it from there. Gene, I need you to do your job. I need a color for the bow tie. I'm looking at burnt orange right now. Burnt <laughs> orange. I would not have ever guessed it. Okay, there it is, guys. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us. Thank you for hanging out with Robert. Guys, please reach out to Robert for any of your loan services and needs. Again, he is a legend, a G, the gangster of all gangsters of, of mortgage here in the Bay Area. Uh, you know, go hang out with them. Obviously, I like them. I've had them on several times. Uh, and go go like and share this. Give us a five-star review on iTunes. It helps us spread the word on who's going to see us. Um, but as always, here's a burnt orange bow tie on this show. And until next time, <laughs> peace out, ninjas. We go.